Miles Brady Davis is the Director of Communications at Equality Illinois. Precious Brady Davis is the Associate Communications Director for the Central Region of the Beyond Cold Campaign at the Sierra Club. They are both activists for the LGBTQ plus community. Precious attended Columbia College and first worked for Center on Halstead LGBTQ Community Center. She mentored transgender teens. She has 15 years of experience in nonprofit administrations, leadership development, and public relations. She has been a speaker and panelist for many organizations. Precious is also a published author with an Amazon bestseller, I Have Always Been Me. They are trans parents whose advocacy resulted in Illinois revising its birth certificate system to better recognize the gender identities of trans parents. Roughly 20 weeks into their pregnancy, Miles Brady Davis and Precious learned that they would automatically be listed as mother co-parent on their child's birth certificate by the Illinois Department of Public Health. Miles' wife, Precious, who is also trans, would automatically be labeled as the father. This mobilized the couple in their successful effort to change the Illinois birth certificate system. So Precious, thank you for joining us here today. And maybe you can tell us uh, why Miles was unable to join us today. Thank you so much uh, for this award, by the way, Michael. And thank you so much for, for having me. Uh, my husband is not with us today as he is busy uh, in, in Springfield uh, as the session gets underway. Uh, so he is busy with the work of the people. Well, I am very much aware I am coming to you today from my office here in the state capitol. So hopefully I will see him around this afternoon. But maybe you could share with us um, how your career of LGBTQ, LGBTQ plus advocacy and activism started. I originally in college, uh, I took a course in LGBTQ literature and I started learning about these great heroes of history, Marsha P. Johnson, Sylvia Rivera. I started learning that the LGBTQ community at Stonewall had this great revolution and, and came out of the shadows at the Stonewall riots. And for me, it felt like it was a great history that was erased. Here we are in October in LGBTQ History Month, you know, and growing up, I didn't learn anything about the LGBTQ community. And I felt like I was discovering a great legacy that I was a part of. And after that, I knew that I wanted to continue being involved in work that pushed progress forward when it came to the LGBTQ community. You know, I instantly began working in outreach on campus. I was the first volunteer at the LGBTQ resource campus uh, uh, library at the University of Nebraska Lincoln, and uh, I've been doing it ever since. Great. Now, maybe you could tell us a little background about uh, yourself and Miles. When and how did you first meet? <laughs> so, Miles and I, we met almost a decade ago. Uh, as you mentioned in the opening, I worked at the Center on Halstead. I oversaw outreach and youth programs. And uh, obviously the Center on Halstead is on the north side of Chicago and Miles lived on the south side of Chicago. He was doing work, work with Affinity uh, Community Services, which Kim Hunt uh, led at the time and was the executive director. Miles wanted to expand his outreach working with trans youth and Kim gave him a list of people that he should contact. My name was the last one on that list and the first person that he came to see. And when he came to see me at the center hall said I had no clue who he was. He, he knocked on the door and just explained to me that he wanted to get involved with work with trans young people. And I was just staring at him like, who are you? What do you want? You know, like, you're interrupting my day, you know, it's just because I was very protective over my young people, you know, working at the center, you know, folks would come through there, you know, and they were doing research studies. I just, you know, was very protective over my young people. And so I took his information and I felt like after that, that that would be that and I would never see him again. And he was just like very persistent. You know, I would see him at various events uh, where the trans community gathered. And I always saw he was like, giving me eyes. And long story short, um, 
uh, about a decade ago, about a decade ago, so many of us would go to the Philadelphia Trans Health Conference held in Philadelphia every year. And uh, he found out that I was going and he was also going. And after me ignoring, he eventually got my phone number. After me ignoring, you know, his text and me telling him that I was deeply involved in my work and I didn't have time to date. As I was boarding my flight to Philadelphia, I checked my email and in my email box and just the subject line was an email from Miles and it said, I can't wait to see you in Philly. And my heart just opened. Here I was telling him that I'm so busy, you know, I'm so dedicated to my work. And he literally found a way to come into my work um, to, to, to be seen. And that weekend was a magical weekend in, in Philadelphia. You know, we had some really great conversations about our, our passion for community, uh, what we believe love looks like in its most revolutionary form. And uh, that weekend, we left Philly as a couple and we've been together ever since. It's a great story. So uh, Miles is down in Springfield. Obviously, he has experience with working in Springfield. Uh, before I was a treasurer, I was a state senator. I'm familiar. But just curious your thoughts. Was the fight to revise the birth certificate system in Illinois more difficult than you anticipated? I am used to progress that gets stalled in a cog. And so I understand what it is to navigate institutions. And I believe that we need folks who are the march and the chant. And I believe we need folks who are creating change within the realm of institutions. And I believe that's what Miles and I do. And that's what we did here. And so luckily, we are a state rooted in equality. We are a state rooted in the fact that trans health care, that that is community care and that is public health and that the dignity of trans folks, that that is important and a, a priority uh, that we don't leave anyone in Illinois behind. And so the, the process was really wonderful. We had great support from uh, the state of Illinois. We had a great support uh, from Lambda Legal as well as Equality Illinois. Great. Well, it sounds like that was a good experience. Uh, you made progress on birth certificates. What issues facing the LGBTQ community are you currently most concerned about? I think we have a great way to go. I think that there are issues of economic empowerment that need to be dealt with. I think there are issues of environmental justice that need to be addressed when it comes to creating access to clean air and clean water. I think we need to address homelessness. We need to address mental health. Uh, the, the work continues as we've ob obviously seen across the country an onslaught when it comes to letting trans youth access, you know, participating in sports. You know, we see this public discourse, you know, about the lives of trans people, you know, being a joke, you know, on multiple platforms. And so I think right now that we are preserving the dignity of trans folks still in multiple ways. Right. Well, President, you have a lot to say, and you've said a lot of it. Congratulations on your new book. Uh, for those who haven't seen or heard about it, can you share what your book is about and what you hope to accomplish by writing it? Thank you so much. I Have Always Been Me is the sum of my life. It is a tale of resilience of a gender not conforming child raised in Omaha, Nebraska, who was you know, instilled in the values of the Pentecostal church from a very early age. I have always been me tells the story of a person who fashioned a shinier mold for themselves where one was not provided. And I think so often today when folks are having conversations in particular around the trans community, they see it as if it is some sort of new phenomena. No, we have always been here. I talked earlier that we have a great history that is erased. And before I had the language to say what I was, I was a queer child, you know, creating a, a new world and leading into the space of authenticity. 
So this book is about celebrating perseverance, uh, resilience, and the joy that comes in transition. Well, that's great. Well, Precious, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I look forward to seeing Miles maybe in the halls of the Capitol here. But before we leave, uh, do you have any words of wisdom you could share with individuals following in your footsteps? People who want to be agents of change. Dr. Martin Luther King once said that the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And for me and Miles, we believe that we are bending the arc. And I think that each and every one of us has a, a place in the work of ad advancing social justice and creating an easier path for those who are coming behind us. And that's really what our work is about. Okay. Well, Precious, thank you very much. Congratulations. This is an acknowledgement from my office uh, about the work you have, you have provided so many people, but also thank you for taking this time and sharing your words. Thank you so much for the honor. We are deeply appreciative.